Well, after some time in the desert, it's time to get to the airport, and maybe get bumped up to business class, and get myself to Inverness and make the climb up that ladder, and get this boat out to sea. And that's what we're made to do, go to sea. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, it's true. The critical path to getting this boat to sea runs through a toilet. And the boat's supposed to look like this, but it currently looks like this. And a lot of work to do to get it in the water. And therefore, we're looking at a toilet. And the toilet is connected to this, which at times can be converted to look like this, which is a terrible bend. But the problem is that this is a holding tank and is currently under this. And that brings us to our problem. Back to the toilet. All right, well, this is uh, what it looks like post head removal. <clears throat> okay, I mean, it's actually a pretty good size space. It's got, uh, for, as for marine heads, it's pretty big. I don't have much for lighting in here. Not much lighting at all. Nice woodworking, you know, with a lot of storage down in there. Goes way in the bottom. Really, no complaints per se, except that it was a marine head. And marine heads, are horrible. I mean, this was filthy. It was just disgusting. The previous owner, I, I'm not saying anything bad about them because it's just not much you can do with marine heads. They all stink. They all get rusty. You can see on the floor, they've got carbon steel fittings that were used to hold the damn thing in. One of the previous owners have tried putting some kind of paint on top of the porcelain for the bowl itself, which is just retarded, but retarded or not, that's what they did. So here's the basic plan. Pointing with my camouflage foot, I'm going to rip this all apart, take that out, take this out, the car, whatever plywood is below that that's coming out. And then I'm going to do rust treatment on the inside of the hole below that. I'm going to physically, destructively remove the shitty, the shit hose, the uh, smelly drain hose. This, that's what's wrapped up in plastic bag. It's got a cork in it, and uh, the small hose is a seawater intake, which does not smell. That's already open up the other end. I've just got to physically find a way to remove it. So I'll be destroying the, this bottom portion of the cabinet, taking that apart, seeing if I can not actually destroy the wood, if I can salvage the wood. That'd be great because what I'm gonna put in here is a, a composting toilet. I've got it in my shopping basket and Amazon just waiting for my next trip up here. Well this is a quick update to show you how the demolition is going here in the head. Now it's always interesting I suppose to try to piece together just what had happened over the years but this piece had been installed in front. So I successfully bust it out only to realize there's another piece underneath there. So I think that was the original construction right there. I think I've only since removed an add-on. And I still haven't gotten the shit hose out or the salt water hose out. But that's right, those will come out when I get this wood out of the way. And I'm trying to save the clean plywood, but I just don't know how much more of this is salvageable. It's just, I mean, it is a ton of work getting this out of here. So, I don't know what the little white wire is yet. I'm going to chase that down later. I hope I know what it is, but I'm not sure that I know. I don't know what the little clear hose is going back there. That. I just don't know what that could possibly be for. So, but that's the purpose of getting access to some of this stuff is to open this up so we can so we can see better. So, all good. Um, I'm gonna continue on with the work here. This is freaking incredible. <laughs> all right, so this is what we're looking at. Um, starting with my feet at the door to the head here. So what you can see what has to be done still is I'm going to make a cut right about at the distance from the edge of the hole to the hose that will make hose removal easier. 
And you can see I've got like the, uh, the dry foam laid against the hull. I, I didn't expect to find this expanding foam stuff. <sighs> Don't know that that's good or bad. Probably bad. I mean, you, you spray on foam and stuff like that and moisture gets behind it anyway and then it traps it and that's where your rust occurs really worse. If you look at the upper portions of the hull, really no corrosion at all. It's really pretty good shape. They say most boats rust from the inside out. That's what they say. In my case, it'll be down the bilges. One day the keel will just fall off. <laughs> and the whole bottom of the boat will fall off. And I hope I'm in shallow water when it happens. This, this is a holding tank. So you can see where we're at. And this is where the dinette area used to be. You can see some of the remnants of the framing where the bench was. This used to be a bench that ran along and then you could fold on the table and have a bed here. We're going to recreate a bed when we're done, but the objective is to get the tank out first because it's full of, quote, shit, end quote. 30 years of it, in fact. 30 years of shit in one tank. Yay! This, the liquids are more or less pumped out of it, but I'm highly confident that the tank is encrusted with a lot of just caked on, well, shit. I, I don't know what else to call it. So it's probably pretty damned heavy. You notice some angle steel in the way, so we're going to have to cut that. I've got a grinding wheel. I'm going to make a cut there right by the word no. Because I didn't want to hit that with my wood saw. I'm going to make a cut right here. I'm going to make a cut over here, a little further over. I'm going to, going to make the cut over there. You know, I'm going to widen that. And then I'm going to remove this tow board you know, at the bottom. I'm going to try to destructively remove it and yet not completely destroy it. So I'll save as much of that piece of wood because it's got the nice pretty finish and I really... I'm going to need it. I'll probably use that in my work area. Probably. We'll sort out the aftermath after the math. So, step one, cut away the wood on top, the decking, to allow me to get the right cuts on the angle steel. So, step one, remove wood. Step two, remove metal. Step three, remove tank. Step four, rebuild. That's the plan. Yeah, so this one was uh, under tension, and when it uh, the cut was made, it kind of popped apart. But this one was under compression, and it kind of snapped together after being cut. So knowing that, and knowing that this is my next target here, I just have to be prepared for that, and I'll change the direction in which I'm cutting. So I'm going to make cut on that black line right there. Then, I'm going to cut it as far to the ground as I can get horizontally. That's two cuts down, not a four, and it's really going much easier than I thought. I thought I'd be using the damn angle grinder and just making a shower with sparks and a grand frickin' mess. And I'm actually very pleased, so nothing like having new uh, hacksaw blades. I broke one, but that's because I'm a dumbass, that's all. So what you're seeing here though, I've done a little bit of cleanup. The brown thing, that's my central AC ducting, which is currently run only to a heater, but one day we'll be passing air conditioned cold air through there and we're gonna have to get some more insulation on that. It's just a paper tube, um, old style. Hell, if I could find more of that stuff and get like insulation wrap, but in this town, it's just freaking possible to find stuff. I, I, I've never seen the like of it, where you can't buy things like insulation for ductwork. You can't even buy ductwork. It's just amazing. I, I, I've actually hired a, hired a handyman just because that person's local and he knows how to find things. You know, is that the damnedest thing or what? Anyway, I'm going to make two more cuts and then it's time for a beer because I know I deserve it. So, hello there. Well, 
holding take nine, rust zero. <laughs> I'm getting my ass kicked by this thing. Not a worry, in a way, because I'm sure I'll eventually triumph here, even if it just means me prying out my wallet and paying someone to do whatever they gotta do to make it come away. <sighs> just using a hexaw, you know, not really a problem, it's just soft, mild steel. <sighs> and I thought, naively, you know, very much naively, that the tank would just lift out now that the framing is gone, but that's not true. There appears to be, and I'll show you some close-ups in a minute here, The it appears that there's some kind of adhesive used, and I don't know what it was, some kind of brown shit. And I don't know if it's dissolvable, maybe there's something I can put on to like, chemically remove it, but this thing, this thing I cannot budget take. It will not move. Ugh. So that may be a job I do tomorrow, because I'm going to have the guys from the boatyard over here anyway. And if he's going to be here to do some welding, maybe I can lay 200 pounds on him. <laughs> so, I don't like getting my ass kicked by, uh, by a holding tank, but, you know, that's life. It's, it's alright. I'm going to win eventually. Please release me, let me Well, I don't know about that. We might have to cut that off. But, we're going to cut that off anyway. <clears throat> yes, that's my uh, dialogue to myself. It's, it's pinching pretty hard here on the uh, corner. And that might be holding enough uh, from preventing me from lifting. But if I cut here and on the back side, which I'm going to do anyway, will solve a problem. Empty and light, maybe it's still full of shit, and, and I really mean shit, and uh, <clears throat> maybe it's uh, going to be heavier, too much that I can lift, so we'll see, it would be so cool if I could not have to use a grinder <laughs> to get the tank up, <laughs> but that's the next step, got two grinders standing by, but first maybe it'll just pick right up. Let's see. One, two, three. Look at that. <laughs> I have defeated you. The vent valve is hitting the deck, and I don't want to cut any more deck away until I know how I'm going to frame it up for the new bed, because this is where Shimmy is going to sleep. And you can see I've got these three valves here. Those three bastards are well, probably the highest likelihood of leaking. They're all shut, and they're all corked, and they're all bagged, but one never knows. I'd like to get those elevated as quickly as I can. 
but I also don't want water to leak out the vent. And there's a fitting here, which I don't think will leak. It looks too badly rusted to leak. So the goal is to get it to sit on this surface right here, upright, and somehow get these to clear the deck. So and maybe it'd be easier just to cut these pieces of steel. Oh my gosh, that was a job and a half. That probably consumed at least two full days. Well, while I was spending days and days inside the boat fighting the holding tank in the toilet, we were busy grit blasting the hull. So we got some uh, three coats of primer and uh, epoxy primer on top of it. The business end. All right, it's August 22, 2019. The main, the main job is complete. The bottom of the boat has been sandblasted. Prior to that, all the weld repair was done. I don't have a single hull penetration anymore, except for the two cockpit drains. Now we're gonna install a depth sounder transducer yet, but don't know where that's going, and I don't know what size yet. So, well, that was a hell of a mess. <clears throat> But now, the messy work is done. Pretty, pretty solid stuff now. Power of a hammer. And I gotta admit, that's a pretty fun toy. That's the kind of toy that your mother would never let you play with as a kid, but I, I am liking the metal grinder I've got. Very good. Well, of course, I like getting the work done, but it's good to get away from the boat, too. I love the architecture, and I love visiting different places. We even took an opportunity to sample the local water supply to see if it was good to fill our tanks. And we headed up along Loch Ness and over to the Isle of Skye, which I enjoyed a lot. I'm getting ready to shove off. I've uh, been here for about 15 days doing work on the boat. <laughs> Biggest accomplishment was demobilizing a lot of stuff that I know I will never need. Examples, and this is not a complete list, you know, the anchor wash system, um, explosive gas detectors in the bilge and one in the propane locker, neither of which worked, you know, old radar cables, radio cables, other communication cables for communication devices used long ago but never properly abandoned and i removed the old marine head that was a big freaking deal to me so 
I'm now getting ready to head over to uh, the train station. I'll take a train to Edinburgh and from there over to Manchester Airport and from the airport I fly to Abu Dhabi. But for now, cheers.